Hello and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm sharing my neutral and black home to give you ideas how to create flow and consistency between connecting rooms and the benefits of designing with a neutral color palette. We're also going to do a mini makeover, but you'll have to watch until the end for the reveal. As always, links to shop are in the description and pinned to the first comment. For anyone new to the channel, I'm Nikki D, your go-to resource for design inspiration, furniture, and decor to make your home look like you hired a designer. If you love all things interior design, be sure to hit that subscribe button for future notifications. Follow along on all my social channels for more inspiration. Now let's get designing. The first floor of our home has an open floor plan. We added an extension in 2005 during the Tuscan trend. In 2019, we did a makeover out of the Tuscan trend and into a more timeless neutral color palette. The lesson here is not to fall into the trap of designing into the latest trend. This is why it's so important to educate yourself on what's timeless and trendy, especially when it comes to your hard finishes. More on that in another video. During the remodel phase, we decided to change this dining room that's off the kitchen into a sitting room. It had become an unused space that was a catch-all for coats, jackets, backpacks, keys, basically anything when you walked into the house. Since we have an open floor plan, all the areas were planned and designed together because each one flows into the other. This doesn't mean that you can't introduce a different color in the spaces, but it does mean that they need to have common elements to connect them together. Let me explain. If you look at these two spaces, the sitting room and the living room have common details that create consistency and flow. The most noticeable is the pink color, which is classic gray. It's a grayish neutral that has a purple undertone, which we chose because it works with our Tuscan kitchen that we can't change right now. Again, a future video. <laughs> For anyone wondering, the trim is simply white in a semi-gloss finish. Each room at its core has a neutral color palette of white, black, ivory, and gray, but the distribution of the colors is different between the two spaces. For example, when you walk into a house, the first thing that you see is this colorful artwork, which was the jumping off point for the design. I talked about how to create a color palette in this video. The colors pulled from the artwork are the blues and pop of pink. There's a navy velvet sofa and an area rug that has the light and the dark blue, plus ivory gray and yellow. Pink accents from the artwork are in the pillows, the neon sign, and then depending on my mood, sometimes I'll add the pink ottomans or pink flowers. The balance of colors are all neutrals of white, ivory, gray, and black. In the living room, the same neutral colors are used, but the balance is different. Here, the main focal point is the black accent wall and fireplace. This was intentional because it's the main TV room of the house, and the frame picture TV did not exist at the time, or I probably would have gotten that. I wanted this space to feel sophisticated and elevated, and the TV black box just takes away from that, in my opinion. So to make the TV blend in and have the white fireplace be the focal point, the wall was painted in a black Benjamin Moore century paint that has since been discontinued, which is a shame because it's literally a soft matte velvet and it's so nice. Even though this space has a contemporary feel, it still has traditional elements in the fireplace, the crown molding, and the symmetry used throughout. Where the living room has the black accent wall, furniture, and decor, the sitting room has black in the front door, the bar cabinet, and the expand coffee table. Another element that's consistent in both spaces is mixed metal. I personally love the look of gold and silver, so both finishes were used throughout. The silver pendant lights in the kitchen and this living room vase have the perfect balance of silver and gold. In the sitting room, there's the silver metal grass cloth wallpaper, faux sheng tung curtains, and silver metal detail on the Bernhard accent chairs. Both rooms have touches of gold and silver spread throughout to tie the spaces together. They both have gold lighting fixtures and silver door handles. Aside from the neutral color palette and the metal finishes, both spaces have similar fabrics. Velvet is used in the sitting room sofa and pillows, and in the living room, it's in the chase, the bench, the ottomans, and pillows. 
The sitting room has white fur pillows while the living room has this white throw rug. I ordered yardage of the Kelly Warsler channel print fabric to make Roman shades to the kitchen, which is another element that helps tie all the spaces together. Then, for an elevated look for less, I bought extra silver shengtung panels that I cut and added a border to these inexpensive home goods linen panels. That was a huge savings, by the way. And it really gives that elevated Kelly Hopin look. Let's talk about why it's so important to use a consistent color palette, materials, and fabrics. Aside from creating flow and carrying your eye throughout the spaces, it also allows you to rearrange the furniture between your rooms because they have a common look and feel. While the sofas have remained as is in these spaces, I have moved several of the pieces around over the years. The pair of accent chairs has been in the following layouts. Next to the sofa, in this corner moment with the oversized artwork, along the stair wall, on either side of the Christmas tree, and currently opposite the navy velvet sofa. The velvet bench has been arranged in the following layouts, next to the living room sofa, in front of a window, and opposite the navy sofa. The chaise has also been in both rooms. It started in this corner moment, and now it's currently in the living room next to the sofa. This leads us to the latest makeover because once again, I'm bored and need a change. <laughs> I say this in every video, but I can't stress the importance of a floor plan when designing your room. It's the roadmap you'll follow so you can order with confidence knowing everything will fit and you'll avoid returns. There is a how to measure and do a floor plan PDF download in the description below, so make sure you grab a copy. I did a quick layout of the sitting room because I wanted to make sure that what I was thinking would work. I measured the table just to be safe and I put it into the West Elm floor plan program that you can see here. So here's what I'm thinking. I want to move the chase to create a corner moment in this area, which means that the table has to move. It's going to come a little bit into this side light panel, but I'm okay with that. Once the chase moves, the accent chair and table will go back to where they originally started, next to the chase sofa. Then the corner table, which is actually a dining table, is going to move into the sitting room in front of the window. It'll be a space to eat, have a cup of coffee, work, film a YouTube video, and enjoy the upcoming summer view. I'll bring back the pink ottomans and keep the vase, which will create a moment that you'll see from the outside. I've had this small table and vase behind the chase before, so if that works with the whole speaker situation, I may move that as well. Lastly, the gray ottomans are going to go in front of the fireplace for extra seating. Now that you know the plan, it's time to get to work. All the furniture in my home is on felt pads, so it makes it super easy to move the furniture from one room to the other. So I literally just slide and drag, which my husband hates, but it gets the job done. So I went through the process of moving everything from room to room. And now for the reveal. Here's the final layout, which I'm so happy with the results. Every time I rearrange the furniture between these spaces, I feel like I went shopping when in reality, I didn't spend a dime. And that, my friends, is the beauty of having a consistent color palette, theme, and design style throughout your home. It not only creates flow and balance, but you can rearrange the pieces for a completely new look anytime you want to change. I hope this was helpful and you learned the importance of planning out your design and not just buying individual pieces here and there. If you're struggling to create a space that feels complete and cohesive, most likely this is the reason why. You need to plan everything as a whole, especially when your rooms connect. I'm going to walk you through both of the spaces, the changes that were made, and how I accessorized. I will say, when I first put the white table here by itself, without the pink ottomans and the decor, I was like, oof, did I make a mistake? Even though I knew it looked good on the actual floor plan, which is what I was following. Sometimes you have to trust the process and just know that until it has your decor and finishing touches and the look and feel, you might not like it. But just go through the motions, finish it, and then look at it. Because now I absolutely love it. It looks beautiful from outside, which I'll show you. And then it also looks wonderful, all styled, I moved the tic-tac-toe and the Jenga with the hands here and created a moment on the lucite table. Then I raised up the flower vase and put it on the books that were in the living room. And then on the table, I created this moment with two ottomans 
that can be used to work. And then I moved the vase with the candles that were on the table before and created this moment with the grouping of three. So just remember items in odd numbers is going to be more pleasing to the eye. So that's what you always want to be mindful of. Several changes were made in the living room. So I'll walk you through from different angles. The chairs were moved and they're angled so that it creates a conversation moment. I kept the decor that was the same and just moved that whole grouping into this area. The two ottomans look wonderful in front of the fireplace. They add extra seating. And then we have the chase, which was the star and the whole purpose of this move was to create this moment here. I did move the drink table and then I put the smaller table with the vase behind and it all looks fabulous. I'm really happy and then I'll show you I move some candles around and decor. The decor changes that were made, this candle replaced the coasters that were there. On the coffee table, the stack of I've been cheating on fashion with furniture, Carrie Bradshaw, book stack came here with the glasses on top. This is a box that has the remote controls and it keeps everything stored away and nice and neat. My husband goes in there a lot, so this needs to be accessible. So I just have the peace sign on top and then we have coasters to protect the coffee table. The Ottomans felt tabs are just on the two Two sides that are on the wood floor so that it's level and even. And we have the decor here that just moved from inside and I used to have three candles here. I moved the gold to give some contrast and now it's just paired with the two candles. So I'm super happy with how everything turned out. I couldn't be more thrilled and in this corner moment we have the drink table, the chase, we have the vase and the small table. You look out the window. It's just such a sweet moment. I'm loving it. And that, my friends, is a wrap. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to the channel to get a notification every Sunday morning. Thank you if you've already subscribed. I'm grateful for the support. Check out this video next for more design inspiration. Ciao!